Hello Year 10. My name is Mr Best and I'm going to be taking you through your home learning maths lesson for today. Now before we get going I'm going to ask that you make sure you have your normal Greenshaw maths book with you, your mini whiteboard and your pencil case so you're fully prepared for everything we're about to go through. At times I will ask you to pause the video and when I do so just make sure you pause it, complete the task and then resume it afterwards to make sure you have the appropriate amount of time to attempt each task. This week we have four lessons that we'll be going through and today we're at lesson one here as you can see and we will be covering stem and leaf. You may have seen this before, if you have done so some of this will look familiar but if not we're going to go through the whole content now. So. Before we get going, we'll complete our do now just like we would in a lesson. So please could you pause the video, split your whiteboard into four quarters and have a go. Okay, now that you've had a chance to go through your do now, I'm going to display the answers for you to mark through and then I'm going to go through each of them individually so you can see the workings and double check our processes. So here's your answers. Now, I'm going to start off by going through the top left question. So we've been asked to find D. And we should hopefully know that all our angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. Now, what we also know is that if these add up to 360, I've currently got 195. And I've got an angle here. And this represents a right angle, which is 90 degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out what my 90 degrees plus 195 degrees equals. So we're going to write down 195 plus 90 degrees. And then what we're going to do is write our answer to this underneath. And that is 285. Now, we just said that our angles around a point add up to 360. So now that I have 360, I'm going to subtract 285. And that will leave me with 75. And therefore, D equals 75 degrees. I've added up at this stage the angles we've been given, 195 and 90 then subtracted them from the total around a point 360 and 75 is what left so therefore D is 75 degrees. The second question similar uh, concepts this time though we had a straight line and our angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees so once again let's look what angles we have we have 30 degrees and just like before, we have 90 degrees. So let's follow the same steps. Let's add up what we have. So 90 plus 30, and that equals 120. Next step, just like before, subtract what we've got off of what we know the total is. So the total must be 180. Subtract 120, and that equals 60, and therefore x equals 60 degrees just the same steps as before now let's go to our next one this is our sequences so with a the first thing i'm going to do is look at the difference between each number in my sequence so from four to seven the difference is i've added three seven and ten well to get there i've also added three and ten to thirteen the same once more so thirteen plus three since this is the common change, that would give me 16, 16 plus 3, well that would give me 19, so there's my next step. B, let's look at the difference, well 9 to 7, what's the difference? Well we subtracted 2, 7 to 5, we've subtracted 2, 5 to 3, we've subtracted 2. So 3 take away 2, that is 1 and 1 subtract 2, well we get to 0 and we continue our way down so that gives me negative 1. Let's go to C, so this time we've got 1 to 4, that is a difference of 3, we've added 3. 4 to 9, well we've added 5, 9 to 16 we've added 7. So here we can see that this was a difference of 3, three, uh, three plus 5 plus 7, so actually we're adding 
2 to the difference each time. So it's 3 plus 2 meant I did 5. 5 plus 2 meant I did 7. So 7 plus 2 means I'm going to add 9 next, which gave me 25. 9 plus 2, that gives me 11. So 25 plus 11 gives me 36. And also, you might recognize these numbers as my square numbers. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. And so on. So I also could have used that in order to figure out my next two numbers or terms in the sequence. Finally, we come on to D. What's the difference between 1 and 1? Well, it's 0. What's the difference between 1 and 2? Well, it's 1, 2 and 3. The difference is also 1. And 3 and 5 is 2. Now, from looking at that, you might notice there's no real clear difference. Now, what I would also look at is look at the terms in the sequence. Well, 1 plus 1 makes 2. 1 plus 2 makes 3. 2 plus 3 makes 5. So each time we're adding the previous two terms. So 3 plus 5, well that gives me 8. And 5 plus 8, that gives me 13. And that would be how I answer my sequences. Now let's go over to our final question, forming an equation. Now I quite like to do my equations by writing as I read it. So I'm going to read this first. I think of a number. Now we're going to represent this number with a letter. In my answer I've put x but it could be n, it could be y, it could be any letter at all. But since it's in my answer I'm going to continue with x. So I think of a number, x, I multiply by 5 and subtract 9. Now remember we like to represent multiply when writing algebraically with letters. We like to put what we're multiplying by first. So rather than have this as it is, I'm going to put 5x, which stands for 5 multiplied by x, subtract 9, just like so. And that would be our workings for all of our do now. Let's get going into today's lesson. So first thing in your maths book, could you pop today's date and the title, Constructing Stem and Leaf Diagrams. You can pause the video for a second if you need to complete this. Okay, so firstly, let's look at what stem and leaf diagram actually is. This is one below, one that I've already made, so we can just have a look at it and we can start to annotate and label it. So we've got here a selection of numbers that go down the side. You can see how it's going one, two, three, four, five, one above the other, a line, and a selection of numbers here. So let's start to actually break this down and look at what all of this represents. So the numbers on the left that I just mentioned, these numbers, known as my stem, represent the first digit or digits of the number. In this case, it's just singular digit, the first digit. These numbers over here are known as the leaves, hence the name stem and leaf diagram. And these represent the last digit. So now if we break this down a bit, first digit is 1, last digit is 4. So therefore we get 14. First digit is 2, last digit is 1, therefore we get 21. 2 and 2, 22. You start to get the picture of how these represent. 3 and 2, 32, and so on and so on. The leaves, you'll notice, are all in order. So here we have it going in ascending order from smallest to largest throughout my list. And if I have some of the same numbers, you'll see I repeat them next to each other before then going up to the next larger number. The value represented is 45 centimetres here. So 4 and 5, just like I discussed, 14, 21, 22. This would be 50, 51. That's the value represented. And you might be thinking, but where do I get centimetres? Well, if I have a look at my key, which we're going to mention now, it tells us, us how the digits combine, but also gives us a unit of measurement. So here you can see that 2 with our line 1 means 21 centimetres, which means that this is now not just 14, this is 14 centimetres, 21 centimetres. What I'm going to ask is for you to pause the video now, copy this example into your book, and then annotate it just like I have. If you'd like to highlight the annotations, feel please feel free to do so. And once you've done it, resume the video and we will carry on. Okay, we're going to move on now. So, 
what are the advantages of displaying data in a stem and leaf? Because obviously there's lots of different ways we can display data um, with different tables. We could just list it even. But the advantage of a stem and leaf is A, it shows how the data is spread out. So here we can see that early on, there wasn't many in the units of 10. Units of 20 increased slightly, but not hugely. And then the 30s and 40s really picked up. This is where a lot of my data was, all in this sort of region. And then the 50s drop back down again. So it just gives us an idea of how it spreads. By gaps in the value, when I'm writing out a table, I might have some in the 10s, the 20s, nothing in the 30s, but then back again in the 40s. So I could identify those gaps. And also, the original data is preserved. We're not just summarizing. We're not just painting a small picture. We're actually getting a full idea of how this data looks. And we can see its exact values. So let's now have a go at creating some of these. So firstly, I've got a question here. Here are the weights of a group of cats. So I've got all these cats weights. They've weighed them in whatever way they did. And I'm going to draw a stem and leaf diagram to represent this. Now, what I like to do here is firstly, I'm going to write down the units of 10. Now I can see these are all only two digit numbers. So I'm going to put as my stem, one, two, three, four, and five. And now I'm going to go, I'm going to start with the 10s, then move on to the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. So I'm just going to underline all the 10s. Let's have a look at this. So I've got 15 here, 11, 12, 18. That's all my unit of 10s. And now remember, we want to put these in ascending order where they go from smallest to largest. So what I'm going to do is now look, well, which of these is my smallest? 11 is the smallest. So I'm going to put a 1, comma. I'm going to cross out the 11 so I know I've done it because I don't want to accidentally rewrite things. What's the next smallest? We have 12. So let's put the 2 to show 12 and cross it out. 15. So we'll put the 5, cross it out. And we've got 18, so 8, and put a line. Perfect, so we're good there. So now, I'm going to have a look. Have I got any 20s here? I actually haven't. So what that means, I'm not going to put 0, because that would represent the number 20. So just to show that there isn't any 20s, we leave it blank. We're going to move on to the 30s. So let's underline the 30s. So we've got 36, 35, 36... 38, 30, and just to double check, I haven't missed any. So now, let's look at the 30s, which is the smallest? Well, the actual number 30. So I'm going to represent this with a 0, comma, cross out the 30. What's next? We have a 35. So we're going to go 5, comma, cross out the 35. Now I've got two 36s. Remember, we need to list both here. So I'm going to put 6, comma, cross it, 6, comma, cross it, 38 is left, so let's put the 8, cross it out. Now that we've done that, let's move on to the 40s, nice and easy, there's only one, so let's put the 7, cross it out, and we're down to the 50s, so underline it, well I've got 50, which is 0, comma, cross it out, 57, 7, cross it out. Now I've crossed every number off. I know I've not missed anything. My data's inputted. Last but not least, I want to do the key. So I'm just going to choose one of my numbers that's in my table here. So I'm going to go with, I quite fancy, 35 as my example. So in my key, I'm going to write the number 3, line 5, equals 35. Now what was my measurement? What unit did we use in the question? It was kg, kilograms. So let's go kilograms just like so. And there is an example, all done. Now what I'm going to ask for you to do is to attempt one of these yourself. Now if you would like to follow my method of underlining and crossing out, on your whiteboard write down the data just as you see it in the question, so you'd write out all the different weights like so, and then as you do them, underline, cross out to make sure you don't miss any, and you're going to put your attempt into your book for me. Here's your question, pause the video, have a go yourself. Okay, now we're going to go through it. So I'm now going to do this question. You can mark yourself through if you get it right. So stage one, let's fill in the stem. One, two, three, four, 
five. And I'm going to start off with the units of 10. So I've got 15, 15, 12. And that's it. So the smallest there is 12. So I'll put 2, comma, cross it off. 15, 15. Now let's move on to the 20. So I've got 2, another 1, and another 1. So now let's have a look at them. Let's put them in order. So we had a 0, comma, cross out there. Then we had an 8. And we had another 8. Now let's move on to the 30s. So you've got 36, 37, 33. So which are the smallest there? Well, 33 is the smallest. So we'll go 3, comma, cross it out. 36, comma, cross out. 37, cross out. Next, we have 46. So we'll go for 6, cross out. And last but not least, 57. So I put the 7, and I crossed out. Now, for your key, you could have chosen any number in your table. So you won't necessarily have the exact same as me. But as long as it was something along the lines of, in this case for me, I'm going to pick 1, my line, 5, equals 15 k g. And as long as it was one of your bits of data, you made sure you had the stem, split them, the leaf, equaled and then back into what the actual number is in kilograms you'd have been perfect so you can mark yours through there and if you didn't get it have a little look now see where we may have made a small mistake so here's a, another question for us and this one looks a little bit different what is different about it you might say well if we actually look here this time we've got decimals and we've only got a one digit in front of the decimal. So I'm going to make my stem here 1 to 5 again because if I look at all the first digits of the numbers they are between 1 and 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and let's go just like before underline all the ones that's the first digit is 1 in this case. So I've got one there, there and there. And now let's put them in order. So we've got 3, comma, 3, comma, 7. Units of 2. So we've got 2, 2, and that's it. So now let's put them in order. So we've got 0, 2.0, 0, and we've got 2.1. Go through the units of 3. Put them in order, so 3.2, 3.3, 3. now let's do the units of 4, put them in order, 4.2, 4.6, and finally we have the 5s, so I've got 5.3. Now. You'll notice that process was really similar to what we did last time. I've just looked through, I've got my, I've got my 1s, I've got 1.3, 1.3, 1.7, and so on. It's really important now that we ensure our key is accurate. So again, let's choose a piece of our data. I'm going to go for 4, my split, my line, and then my leaf, which was 2. So 4, 9, 2 equals, and it's 4.2 back to my original unit, which was centimetres. Okay, it's really important this key shows exactly what my four and two in the stem and leaf stands for, and it's 4.2 centimetres. Now we're gonna give you a go again. So here's your question, pause the video, and once you've finished, resume it, and we'll have a look how you got on. Okay, so let's begin. So our stem and leaf, let's do the units of one first. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. My units of one, that isn't me crossing out the four, that's just not very accurate. So I had 1.1, 1 1.8, 1 1 
units of two. Now let's have a look. So in order, we've got 2.0. That's my first one. So zero. Then it goes 2.2. Then it goes 2.3. Then it goes 2.3 again. Now we move on to threes. We've got one there. And that's the only one. So we go 3.7. Cross that off. Now we've got fours. We've still got this one, which was 4.3. Cross it off. Now we've got my five. So I've got 5.2, 5.6. So let's go 5.2, 5.6. Cross it off. Now I've completed my table. Well, we've got the key still to do now. Remember, just like before, as long as you've used one of your pieces of data, that's absolutely fine. So for me, this time, I'm going to go for the fives. So I've got my stem, my split, six equals 5.6 centimeters. Okay. Have a look at yours, see how you got them. Mark yourself through. Now, one final example. You can see again, this time we're slightly different. This time, I've gone into hundreds. So we've no longer just got a two-digit number to look at. So before we had things like 10, 24, 36. And then we had 1.2, 5.2, all two digits. So this time what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the first two digits of my number in my stem down here. And ensure that this leaf section remains as one digit. So what do I need to start? What's the smallest? So I've got 130 something. Is there 120 anywhere? No, there's not. It's only 130. So my starting point is going to be 13. Then 14. Then 15. Is there anything bigger than 15? In this case, there isn't. So we're just going to go with 13, 14, 15. So let's underline everything that has 13 as its first two digits, or represents 130. So this does, another, and we're just going to keep underlining. And this is why I like this method of underlining, because it just makes it super clear that I'm not missing any data. So now let's have a look, which is the smallest? So 134, 37, 139, 130. 133 is the smallest, so now I can just put a three, a comma, let's cross that off again. What's the next smallest? 134. Yes, it was. So we put four. Let's cross that out. 135. So let's put a comma. Let's cross that out. Uh, next, 137. And all that we're left with is now two lots of 139. So let's put a nine, cross off, a nine, and cross off. Now we're looking at... 14 representing 140. So we've got one here, two here, three here, four here. So we've got 140 was my smallest. Cross it off. We've got 142. Cross it off. We've got another 142. Cross it off. And we've got 148. So we cross that off. What's left? Well, I've got my 15 or representing 150. So I've got 150 exactly. So I put zero, cross it off. And I've got 156, cross it off. I've completed my set of data. What's next? Create my key. Again, ensuring that we have our stem here, our splitter and our leaves so that we're showing the diagram completely. So we've got my example, 13, line I'm going to go 4 and that equals 134 now this time my numbers don't actually say a unit but if I look back to the question below the heights in centimeters so 13 line 4 equals 134 centimeters so just be aware sometimes those units can be hidden in our question so now into your book again time for you to have a go Pause the video and attempt it yourself. 
Okay, let's start going through it. I apologise for my pen just catching on your side of the screen there. I hope you're able to read it okay. So, once again, I'm going to look through what have I got in terms of sizes? 130, 140, going through. So, again, 130 is the smallest unit, so I'll go 13, 14, 15, just like so. And now let's start the underlining process. So, I've got 132. Oh, I've just spotted going through there as well. We had 168, so we should have added a 16 as well. And then I've got 139 here. And that's all of my 130. So which is the smallest one? It's 132. So let's put 2, comma, let's cross that off. And then 139. Now we're going for our units of 140. So we've got 140, 149, 145, 147, 143. 146. So which is the smallest? Well, 140 itself. So 0 and cross that off. 149. 143 is the next smallest. So we'll cross that off. Next we've got 145. Cross it off. We've got 146. Cross it off. 147. Cross it off. And 149. Cross it off. Next, we move on to our 150, so I've got one here, one here, and one down here. So, my smallest of those is 150, so I put my zero, cross it off, 152, and 154. Now, all we've got left is 168. So, I'm going to put an eight, I'm going to cross it off, just like shut so. Now, once again... I've said it with the previous ones. The key, you could have used any of these examples of your data here. Just make sure that it is from our stem and then our leaf. So I'm going to go this time. Let's go 15, line 2, which represents 152 centimetres. So just mark yours through. And once you've done that, resume the video. Okay, just one for you to have a quick go at on your whiteboard. Pause the video, have an attempt. Okay, I'm going to pop this up for you to mark yourself, just to see how you got on. So, this should have been what our set of data looked like in a stem and leaf diagram with a key. Remember, as long as you use part of your data here and use the correct unit of measurement and then represent it as the correct number, that is completely fine. If you've made a mistake or you're not quite sure, have a look back at your examples or go back in the video to get some support. If you're happy and you feel confident, now we're going to have a bit of an attempt at some questions. So here is three different sets of data. I'm going to label these just for you as A, B and C. Can you in your book please create a stem and leaf diagram for each of those three sets of data for me? Pause the video and resume once you've done so. Okay, now you've had a chance to attempt those three questions. We're going to go through the answers. So this was A, question A. You can see here was my original set of data and here was my stem and leaf with a key. Once you've marked it, resume the video. Here's question B. Here's my set of data, here's my stem and leaf, and here's my key. Once again, pause the video if you need to mark it, and then resume once you've done so. And finally, C. We've got our data here, our stem and leaf, and our key. Once again, pause the video if you need to mark this through, and resume once you've done so. So. My final example that I just want to run through as an opportunity for you to see it and have a quick attempt is a back-to-back -back stem and leaf. So you might be thinking that this looks similar but with a few differences and you'd be absolutely correct. So you can see this time I've got two sets of data, female and male data, and this is the age of teachers. Okay, So on this side of my stem, here's my stem, I've put females, and this side I've put males. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to focus purely on my female data. Okay, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to go, right, so I've got units of, remember this will represent 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. So let's underline all the 20s first for my female teacher. So I've got one there, 
just underlining any units of 20 that I see and that would be it you can also see this time we're quite lucky that they've been put in order for us already so I've got 22 cross it off because we still want to make sure we don't accidentally put any twice 24 27 29 now let's move on to the next set so we've got units of 30 so I've underlined them so I've got 31 32 35 35 again 37 and 39 units of 40 so I've got 40 itself 44 44 again 47 and that's it finally I've got 52 57 and 59. Now that we've done that, we'll quickly have a little look at the females. Sorry, not the females, we've just done the females. We'll look at the males. So we're going to look at our units of 20. So we've got one there, one there. So we're going to go this time, working from our point here. This is our stem. And we're going to write it this way. So my first one is unit 3. And then I've got 7, 27. Now let's look at my 30s. So I've got the 30 itself. 31. 32. 36. 39. Next units of 40. You can see we've got a few of these. So we've got 42. 43. 45, 47, 48, 48 again. Finally, units of 50. So I've got 50 itself, 51, 52, 59. And I've now completed a back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram. And um, there's one thing left to add to this, which is a key. So it's really important that with your key, apologies for accidentally skipping there, with your key this time, I'd write a key for male and female. So I've got a box here for my key and another box here for my key. So I'm just going to write key. And again, I'm going to write key. So what I'm going to do for the male's key is that I'm going to write here that two line three represents 23. So that you can see that I'm reading it from the two to the three and that, that represents 23. And then I've got a key for my females and that's going to say that two line four that represents 24 and since my question hasn't given me any units we're not going to add units we're just going to leave it as it is if it has units we will put them in if it doesn't give us units we'll leave it as it is now copy that into your book for me and once you've done so resume the video and you'll have an attempt okay so you can see here, here's a question for you. It does say here the heights in centimetres, so this time you have a unit of measurement, and you're going to draw a back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram for this. Have a go, pause the video, resume once you've done so. Okay, so this is your answer. So your back-to-back -back stem and leaf should have looked like so. I've put type A and type B here. If you wrote type, that's perfectly fine. And then there's two keys, one for type A, one for type B, just like so. Pause the video if you need to mark it through. 
And now we have finished today's lesson. Well done for getting through and working hard. I just want to remind you, frog, make sure now all your hard work that you've just done for this lesson, please take a photo of it. And once you've taken a photo of it, jump onto frog, go into file drop for this lesson and upload the photo of your work so that your teacher can see it and that we then know you've completed all this work and we can see how you've got on. I look forward to seeing you for tomorrow's lesson. Have a lovely rest of your day and see you soon.